Welcome to another episode of the Convest Report, where we sit down with industry experts to discuss the latest developments in the Canadian small cap sector, particularly mining. I'm your host, Arlen Hansen. As always, please be aware of our standard disclaimer in the description below that no part of this interview should be taken as investment advice. And as I don't know what stocks we're talking about today, Kin may own shares or be compensated by the companies that we discuss in today's interview. Be sure to join our network, subscribe to our channel, comment on the videos below, share them with like-minded investors, and look back and check out the recent conference that we hosted with uh, interviewing a bunch of CEOs in the mining sector. Today, I'm joined by Jeff Clark, an accomplished analyst, author, speaker, and globally recognized authority on precious metals. As an active investor with a love of writing, Jeff eventually became a mining industry analyst, including 10 years as a senior editor for the world-renowned publication Big Gold. His book, Pay Dirt, was recently released last year, which discussed in the proven method in picking promising mining stocks. He's the founder of thegoldadvisor.com and has been a regular conference speaker, including at the Cambridge House, Sprott Resources, Metals Investment Forum, the Silver Summit, and many, many others. Jeff, terrific honor to have you on the show today. How you doing? Doing great, Arlen. Thanks for having me. This uh, this should be fun. No, oh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a great time, and we got lots to talk about with this massive move in gold and silver. Copper starting to finally move. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, well, what's going on? What do you think the the big trigger here for gold and silver to finally catch a bid? Not that the stocks are, but uh, yeah, right. Well, some are, but I think this all jump started because uh, if you recall, for how long, six, eight months, the Fed was saying, you know, we're not going to lower rates, we're not going to lower rates, very little. Then all of a sudden, they hinted, Jerome Powell hints that, well, he didn't actually hint, he actually declared, we are going to lower rates uh, three times as much as three quarters uh, of a point, um, you know, this year, before the end of the year. And that was, I think, sooner than what the market thought. And so I think that's what kickstarted all of this. And then there's, of course, a lot of other things that piled in. You had traders piling in. You had some definitely had some short covering, I'm sure, oh, in, yeah. in all of this. Um, that That's kind of fun to watch. Um, yeah. But, you know, now you have some momentum traders jumping in and, and you, we still have all the concerns that all of us gold people have been talking about for years. The debt, the deficit, interest payments, geopolitical concerns, elections coming up. I mean, the list just goes on. So it's amazing to me to think that the gold price is here, almost at 2300 as you and I talk, and yet none of these other factors have really played out yet. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's not going to go in a straight line, but the gold price and silver price is going to be a lot higher uh, at some point later in the next year, the next two years, the next three years than where it's at right now. Yeah. And, and when true mania sets in, I'm a big believer we see a $5,000 print, right? There's a mania in every bubble, in my opinion, right? So it, yeah, uh, they're real. that's a good point. There is a mania in every bubble. I just tweeted out yesterday, you know, at some point I'm begging people today to buy you know when they're complaining about a stock not moving and i said someday i'm going to be begging people to sell you're going to have yeah. to sell when we get that <laughs> mania you know uh to lock yeah. in some what we what i think is going to be some very big profits yeah well i got i got really excited about talking about gold and silver right away but can you actually give our listeners a little bit about background about your your website and your book that you've published i know it's been a big hit um, so yeah, a little bit, a little bit of background on you, if you don't mind. Real quick, it's an interesting story. My dad was actually a gold prospector uh, for a while. He didn't work for a oh. company; he worked on his own with a group of guys and all that. Made Sorry a to hear that. Nice... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he uh, his biggest discovery though was a, it was this giant. Um, it was heavy. It was a big piece of quartz, and woven throughout of it throughout it was 3.5 ounces of gold oh, it was a beautiful thing you know so you still have um, that specimen no uh he's uh in mining heaven now but at the time he kept it for a while it was a beautiful doorstop um it was heavy it had to sit on the floor you know it couldn't even go in your desk um uh, and then he eventually broke it down made some jewelry out of it and a kids still have that to this day but that's cool and then i got hired by uh doug casey's firm back in 2007 i worked with lobo tigre some listeners probably know that name uh he and i were the metals team at the time um 
I still consider him to this day to be my mentor. I learned an awful lot from him and everybody at at, at Casey at the time, including he's a, Doug. He's a smart cookie. He really is. He knows what he's doing. And and I, you know, I have a paid letter now too, but I, I really defer to him a lot. You know, he, mm -hmm. he he's great. He's he's the best as far as I'm concerned. Um, worked there for a while. And then, you know, I've worked for a bunch of dealers and other newsletters and things like that. But I kind of found myself not really into the mining stocks that much in 2019. So I just started sharing what my picks were. I thought that'd be great, right? So I did that. But the number one question I got back every single time was, hey, how did you come about picking this particular company, this particular stock? And why didn't you pick that one? What do you like about this one? And so the idea of writing a book, you know, came up, but this is pre-COVID, right? So mm -hmm. I, I was just too busy. I just I, I just didn't have the time. If you're going to do it, I'm going to do it right, right? So uh, then COVID hit, and uh, it, it's Mike Maloney's uh, production manager, uh, Dan Rubach. He suggested the perfect title for the book, uh, Pay Dirt, How to Hit Yeah, it's Pay awesome. Dirt. Awesome. It, it is. It, it's great. <laughs> I'm building a whole franchise around it. So. Yeah, amazing. So hats off to Dan. It was the perfect title. And when COVID hit, you know, you couldn't go anywhere and do anything, right? So I turned the night light on at the desk and started writing. And it took two and a half years um, off and on, you know, but I put my heart and soul into it, interviewed a whole bunch of other people. I haven't seen a lot of, you know, how-to books do that. I, I share my method and why you know, how I've been successful with mining stocks. But I also interviewed uh, 17 other people in the industry and they're in the book, giving their advice and input on all different topics. There's hundreds of quotes from them in there. So um, so it's available now in digital form on our website or you can get it on Kindle. You can buy a hardback on Amazon. Uh, if you catch me at a conference, I'll have copies with me and I'll, you know, sell them for cash discount or whatever but it was great it was a lot of work I yeah no kidding do it again but yeah. it's awesome i i loved it and, you know in my opinion it needed to be done yeah um so i think it's a great read um and i don't want to give away your your, your secret to success but what, what's the crux what, <laughs> what, are your, what are your top three kind of hey this is this is how i look at these these types of companies well level. you always you always start with the three legs of the stool right the people the politics and, and the property, you know, the projects, um, you know, if you stick with um, the very top people, and other people have said this too, including Rick Wool, if you stick with just the 10 top people, you know, you're going to have a lot more odds of success than you will trying to spread it around to 50 different management teams. So, um, And unexperienced management teams, right? You know what? It's not just unexperienced. Um, and, and you know what? There are some companies that I have on, on our website that have an inexperienced CEO or, or whatever, but the team around them, you know, especially the geological team is superb. And I'm not looking for just experience. What I'm looking for is something very specific, and that is uh, successful experience. But how you measure that is go back and look at the companies that this team had before, that the companies they ran before, and did they create shareholder value? Just look at what the stock price did. Did the stock price go up under their tenure of their previous companies? You know, yeah. very easy and simple to do. Cool. And uh, when you find that, you know, you're probably onto something, you know, pretty good. But obviously I'm looking at politics. If I don't know about um I hear about a great drill hit and I don't know the company. The first thing I'm asking is, okay, who's behind it and where is it? I want to know, is it in Africa or is it in Quebec or Canton, Nevada mm -hmm. or whatever, you know? So politics are very important. I've been burned before. Quick story. Um, uh, Aurelian Resources and uh, anybody, any listener out there knows that, you know, uh, I know how old you are. I know you're an old guy, but <laughs> um <laughs> or girl. But um, anyway, uh, you know, that stock went up 10,000% uh, roughly back then. This is like 2006, seven, maybe right in there. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Um, and look what happened. You know, if, if uh, uh, 
the, basically the government got involved and they wanted so much of the cut, you know, in taxes and fees and, and this and that and royalties that the company couldn't put it in production. They General had to sell it yeah. to somebody it, else. Was that, the, that was the Frute del Norte project, right? Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Very good. Very good memory. Yes. Exactly. I've been doing this for 25 years, Jeff. I've seen a couple mines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very um, good. Yeah. So, so and there's people a good lesson project... in there, though, also, because there were a lot of investors that didn't sell. They just held on to the stock. You know, after it went up 10,000%, you have to take profits. You have to take profits. It, it's it's a it's a core tenant in, in pay dirt. You don't have mm -hmm. to do it necessarily at a double, but you got to take profits if a stock goes uh, crazy. You have to do it. And those who didn't lost out. Yeah. The um, the black swan events I've seen in my career in this game, right? And it, it's it's always the one that you're like, wow, this thing is really going to rip. And it's like the next day, it's something black swan-y comes out and you get to see yeah. it. Right? It, just, it never ceases to amaze me, right? Like yeah. I, always, I always ask like management teams, hey, like what keeps you up at night or, you know, what could go wrong? And no one ever That's brings a up a, no one ever brings up black swan events because they happen. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. And but if you have a really experienced management team that's been through black swans before, that that's a really good thing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you want to look closely at, at at management teams like that if you can find them. Yeah. I, I really appreciate your comment about actually creating shareholder value. Um, yeah. there's been there's been a lot of teams over the last 10 years in a bear market, right? So tougher to create real leverage. Um, but you know, they end up making a two, $300 million market cap company, but the share price is flat the whole time. Cause all they did was dilute and dilute and dilute, dilute and dilute yeah, that, the same that's the... price. Right. So part of creating shareholder value is, is, is finding a great asset, but also being able to how to move it forward, raising money at consequently higher levels, regardless of the market environment you're in. And you'll get that support from the street and the analysts if you're credible and you, you know, you, you know what you're doing, you know how to technologically or t technically speaking, you can move an asset forward. Right. And that's what, that's what experience brings you in the, in this market. Right. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so thanks for your, your background there. Um, what, what metals right now do you think people got to be looking at right now? Well, obviously you have to be looking at gold and silver, and the good news is, even though they're spiking, um, the metals, uh, excuse me, the the uh, miners have not moved that much. Now, some are starting to jump. Yeah. So if you're going to do this, you need to get in pretty quick. And that's been my biggest fear, Arlen, is this thing's going to take off. And I was saying this in interviews before, you know, this all started happening. And that was my biggest fear is this thing's going to take off, including a lot of stocks that I want to own and leave me behind in those. And so I've been I've been loading up, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that's paying off. But, you know, there's still more I want. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it's yeah, I think I think we're going to have a really interesting year. Like we we didn't get that pre PDAC run. Usually after <laughs> PD, usually after PDC, that's right. All the stocks, get, all the stocks get crushed. Yeah. And so right. I'm really I'm really curious to see if we're going to have one of those flip summers where these mining stocks just go ballistic in the summertime. Yeah. Um, it, it just feels really backwards this year. And with the Fed hinting at those interest rate cuts in the second half of this year, it, it's just all teeing up. It's it's it's, it's all lining yeah. up for like a really exciting, busy summer. And I wouldn't be surprised if one day when you and I wake up, all of a sudden we look at our board and these junior exploration companies are 20% higher across the board. And like, that's how yeah. I think it's, that's what I think the tipping point is going to be. And then that generalist money flow is going to start flowing in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And there'll be, uh, some will be 20%, some will be 30% and some will be 50%. I mean, that's going to happen and that'll happen for sure in a mania somewhere you actually even double in a day. There was a day back in 19, the 1970s when, the silver price, silver, not a miner. The silver price itself rose 36.5% in one day. We're going to see stuff like that again. And, you know, the average silver, silver is running. The average silver spikes 140%. Um, you know, if you take out the 1970s, it, it's still a double. And so, you know, 35, 40, 45, $50 silver is not, you know, unreasonable to think we could hit in this current run 
you know, yeah. three years from now, question. it'll be different. But, yeah. you know, right now, uh, we could even hit those numbers in this run. We'll see. Yeah, I, I think you are going to see those days where gold can move 75 bucks in a day. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it, and, hey, the higher the price we get, the less percentage that is. So maybe it's not even that unfeasible. Right, right, exactly, right. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so like um, uranium and copper, you know, uranium, uranium's running. So we're we're long and strong there. We've actually taken profits in some of our, in many of our uranium stocks. Good, um, good. But we have a brand new pick uh, for a uranium company that just came out. I also like copper, you know, the supply demand I'm sure you've talked about is it, it, the su supply demand issue is is real there. It's uh, very, it, very, very real. It's staring at us in the face. I think probably fundamentally easier to understand than anything out there. Yeah, there's absolutely. Yeah, right? the same thing happening in uranium and that's happening right now. And then copper's yeah. next, you know. Silver's happening now, probably less because of supply demand, but but more because of monetary reasons, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's it'll outperform gold. So I think you know of all the metals, I like those four the best, and then the runner up would be lithium. Um, the lithium price, given back literally all of its gains everything from its crazy a big spike, <laughs> but there are companies that you know are are making discoveries, or I think will make discoveries, and of course. You know, the the need for a lithium is not going to go away. You know, you see headlines all the time about, well, EV sales are down, EV production's down. That's all true. But what people aren't realizing is that the battery in a hybrid vehicle also uses lithium. In fact, it uses a little bit more lithium in that battery than an EV. And hybrid sales are higher. Everybody's switching from, you know, EVs to hybrid, and they use just as much lithium. So... Mm -hmm. The lithium market is is real. That's going to happen too, and I'm I'm excited about you know some companies that we have there too. Yeah. Well, speaking of giving up on that lithium price, uh, I wouldn't put it past the fact that the, as soon as the spot market opened for lithium, that uh, that's when right. that, that's when lithium prices started getting crushed, and yeah. now all of a sudden China is starting to take positions in these lithium producers. So right. was there was there market manipulation there? I don't know, but it certainly wouldn't. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't. Uh, you know, you I, have, I wouldn't second guess have, that. <laughs> right, right. But you have actual auto manufacturers that are showing up at lithium conferences, yeah. lithium yeah, mining yeah. conferences. Like they've never done that before. And in the last year, now you see, now you see a lot of them. And Tesla would, had three representatives at one lithium mining conference not one Crazy. guy they had three guys there yeah. so i think it's real it's actually you know people got excited about it it's all given back now but it's real and it's going to happen yeah um well i think sigma just announced that they sold a bunch of their um their their production and uh, at a, a premium to spot price and i think they put in a press release or in their in their quarterlies that they had multiple bidders for it yeah. So yeah. It, 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 it's, I think the lithium market is, is certainly bond owned and uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, okay. I want to get into some names that you like, Jeff, if you don't mind. Um, sure. You know, again, this is not investment advice um, to anybody. Uh, speak to your investment advisor if you are looking at investing in this wildly risky junior mining sector. Um, but yeah, Jeff's had some uh, great picks over his career. So I want to pick his brain. So <laughs> I'll take. <laughs> so let's 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 talk about some gold and silver names first. What do you what do you like out there? Sure. Um, uh, you know, in 2022, the big winner for us was Snowline Gold. Um, yeah. More than 10x. You know, yeah. sitting on 13, 14, 15x now. Last year it was Hercules Silver with that big copper discovery. Um, that's going to be real. I still like that company a lot. So mm -hmm. the question is, who's going to be the big one here in 2024? And, uh, you know, some are running already, but somebody's going to make a, a a nice discovery out there that's going to really ignite the stock. So um, a couple I like. One is Independence Gold. Um, we have that on the portfolio, but that's a, a Randy Turner uh, yep. company. He's been around forever. Ever. Um, highly successful. Highly successful. Knows what he's doing. There are three T's project up in BC 
Um, it has a small resource, but they keep finding more gold in these gaps that they're drilling in. There's also the potential for a copper porphyry there, but right now it's really focused on gold. The grade there, though, is actually higher than um, Artemis uh, Gold Blackwater Project next door. The grade is higher. So, you know, the odds of them getting eventually bought out by Blackwater or by Artemis um, you know, relatively high. Artemis is focused on their own thing right now. You know, they're putting something into production. Um, but I think, uh, you know, Independence Gold is going to be very attractive. Randy Turner knows what he's doing. So uh, just, you know, I would own that stock and just sit back and I'm going to let him do his job. Now, watch, it's run up a lot. You know, we're on more of a double. But, you know, wait for a pullback if, if you're interested in that story. Another one, it, it's really a sleeper stock, is um, Radisson Resources. It's in Quebec. They already have almost a million ounce resource. Um, it's completely out of the radar. Nobody's really talking yeah, about it. I've never heard of that, that name. They have the highest grade gold deposit that is undeveloped um, in Canada. It's over 10 grams per ton. Is that RDS on the, the venture? RD, yeah. Yes. Radisson Resources is the name. Um, I like them, and they haven't really moved that much yet. Um, <laughs> but they're going to grow that deposit. It's going to, you know, my opinion, it's going to go to 2 million ounces um, and, and probably keep that grade, then maybe three. They're probably going to be bought out. Um, I, I do like a lot of Quebec plays. I have others, but but that's one that's uh, on the Gold Advisor site, our site for free. People can can read about it and follow it. Uh, we report on the news, by the way, of, of all the companies we cover. I think we have 22 there now, um, just like it was a paid newsletter. I have a paid newsletter, but the free site uh, reports on all these as well. And then on Silver, my little group there is... Suma Silver, Galen McManera company, they're really undervalued. They're starting to pop. So uh, that's one I really like. Yeah. I think Galen's a, like a rock star CEO too. Like he's a, he's an yeah. up and comer and in, in 20 years, we'll be talking about him as a legend, in my opinion. Oh yeah. He's already won two different awards for discoveries. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he is a rock star. No pun yeah. intended. <laughs> and I didn't mean a pun intended, um, but Hey, going back to Radisson quickly, just for yeah. our, our listeners. Yeah. The last sure. hole that they put out was 81 grams per ton over three meters. That, that's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, that, that's, that's, a, that's of, a high grade project. That's crazy. It's very high grade. Um, great management team there. Um, I really like the CEO. They had another CEO. They thought the contracting with him didn't work out. So the interim CEO is back to being the CEO. He's actually, actually the chairman of the board. Um, a lot of us, Michael Gentili's in this as well. Um, a lot of us wanted uh, him to remain as the permanent CEO, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to be chairman. He's done already done a lot in his life. He wants somebody else to do the day to day. But Let the guy um, I like them. <laughs> well, I don't retire. want him to retire yet. You know, <laughs> like I tell all these CEOs, you know, 10x first, please. You yeah, know, exactly. So I, Help me I retire want... first before you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right on. So we 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 both agree Suma Silver there. Um, a couple other silver names. Yeah, well, Vizo Silver and yeah, Dolly Varden. It's yeah. it's hard to go wrong with those two. You know, um, they've already got big deposits. They've already got resources. Um, but the issue with both of them is there's a lot more land to yet drill and explore. And Vizla just added to their land package. In fact, the land package they just bought was bigger than what they already own. Oh, yeah. That's how much they added. Um, there's a great map um, on our site. We compared the resource of what Vizla has to the island of Manhattan. And it's just a small, tiny part. That's how much exploration potential still exists at Vizla. You know, Dolly, I'm a fan of Sean Kun Kun, yeah. CEO. He's completely transformed that company. Yeah, he's a great job. Uh, in my conversations with him, he is bound and determined to uh, not only sell this, but create shareholder value so that we get the maximum return on our investment because he's a obviously a huge shareholder as well. So I'm a total fan. That th Those three right there, that's a great little basket, I think. You know, it's interesting. All three of those companies have kind of young gun CEOs like Michael Connor at Vizla. 
and uh, right, exactly right and, and, I, and i and i love to see this younger generation and when i say that kind of like my age and a little bit younger i, I think i'm older than all of them um it's just nice to see some of the younger crowd you know uh rolling up their sleeves and getting their hands dirty and, and getting to work um yeah one of my one of my biggest notices of you know some of the conferences i've been lately is the lack of young investors it's crazy right like you, right. you can right. you can pack a full room and you can count on one hand you know people that don't have gray hair yeah i'm, I'm one of the ones <laughs> right. with gray hair i'm one of the ones with gray hair as well so <laughs> I'm getting to be that older crowd. And uh, I, I think we'll see that change though. Like, you know, as this market improves, as they see that you can yeah. make money in the mining sector, then they'll start believing it. Then your cactus club server will start telling you what stocks he's been buying, you know, right. and then this, and the cycle continues, right? We've, we've been down this road before. You know what, if you get a risk off environment, the Bitcoin crowd, you know, Bitcoin, I think most would agree is a risk on asset. If Bitcoin struggles, and junior miners are taking off and screaming higher, I think that does attract some of the younger crowd. Oh, 100%. And the money flow, right? We we know our, the size of our, the total market capitalization of all the junior exploration companies is nothing, <laughs> right? Right. And the money right. flow that's, that, you know, when, when they start going, okay, I'm out of these cryptos and the Bitcoins and I'm going to rotate into undervalued assets, it, it takes yeah. it's all but, you know, two sovereign wealth funds to decide to take a basket of junior mining stocks and these things just scream. Oh, no, oh yeah. No paper, and not right? only that, you know, Apple, the computer company, has more cash than the entire market cap of silver equities. <laughs> That's just not I'm not saying they're gonna buy them. Yeah, Maybe they yeah. I don't know, but I'm just saying that's how small the sector is, and just a little bit of money coming in can, you know, make these things scream. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to copper. Let's uh because I think copper is where uranium stocks were about a year ago. Like in my yeah. opinion, like, like the fundamentals are there. The momentum yeah. isn't there in the stocks. They just haven't started moving. Um, I was buying uranium stocks for years before it's yeah. finally yeah. had its pop, right? And we all complain like, my God, my God. I feel like the same thing's happening with copper. Um, so can you rattle off a couple names there? That's that you, a you, you kinda yeah, like? good point. You know, I have to go back to Hercules Silver, um, they do have a lot of silver. They have a silver resource. They're finding silver when they drill. But this, you know, that copper hit they had, and the stock really spiked on that. The next result came out, and it wasn't as good, and so the stock gave some of it back. But this is turning into more of a copper play than just a silver play. It's probably going to be a copper silver company. Um, every tech. Every technical person that I've talked to at conferences I've been at, everyone agrees, oh, yeah, they're onto something real there. Yeah. The, you know, yeah. the stock may have suffered after that second uh, announcement of the drill result, but uh, this is real. This is going to be a real deposit. Remember, Barrick invested, oh, 23, shoot, what was 23 the million bucks, 23 million. Was it 23? Bucks. Yeah, 23 yeah. million into this company. Um, you know, uh, I Barry knows what they're doing. You know, so yeah, they yeah. Pro they weren't there for the silver. You know, they were there for the copper. Yeah, of course. Well, I think the market doesn't understand the district scale play that's now going to be evolving off off this, right? Like, it's right. impossible to follow up a second hole to be as good as that first hole. Let's be honest, right? Like that first right. hole was an absolute clangor. So unless you beat that, the market would sell off, right? And it's, just right. How, it's just the psychology of the market. But they also didn't get to drill their best targets. Right? Oh so yeah, they, that, that's this is going to be really interesting when they start drilling in May to see kind of what direction they're going at, um, and then we might start seeing some of the area plays light up. But I, I think in fifty years we'll look back if we're still alive and and we'll see four or five new large copper copper mines in production in that area. That's a good point. Um, Hercules has only put four holes, to yeah. copper holes into this project. That's it. Four. That's it. I mean, yeah. they're going to go 50, 100 holes. Where's the stock going to be when they do that? Um, and yes, you're right. That's a very good point. Um, uh, this could be a district scale. Nobody thought there was any copper in Idaho. People heard Idaho, they thought silver, maybe gold. Nobody thought of any copper. And so now all of a sudden, and that's reinforced by what Barrick did, you're going to have major players coming in and looking at uh, projects for uh, copper potential, and it's all because of what Hercules found. Yeah, and like as far as I'm aware, like this entire district's been staked now. Like it's yeah. in, in, in tens of kilometers, or I don't know the exact number, but or kilometers and kilometers and kilometers in every direction. 
Yeah. Right? And yeah. So they've that, got a that, large. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, uh, that's certainly one of my watch lists. It's going to be really interesting. That's going to be a really big drill program and really good for the market. Um, the stock's liquid. Uh, hopefully the, the investors can make a ton of money on that and continue to rotate into some, you know, other plays and other investments, right? That's and it's needs. still down from, you know, that recent news. It's still, the stock is still down. Yeah. So it's actually a good buy now. Yeah. Well, I think Barrick put that money in at a buck 20. All right. And so yeah. <laughs> cents. it's trading at 83 cents right now and, and it's liquid. Right. So awesome. Um, so yeah, I agree with you on that. I agree with you all your names to be quite honest. Um, and then any other things in the copper, copper side? You know, I'm going to be recommending. So here's one for for people. Uh, it'll be in Pater Prospector, the the paid letter, but that's uh, Amark Resources, the old uh, you know uh, Bob Dickinson company up there uh, in BC. So they've got multiple projects. Most are with earn in agreements. They have one that they own 100. Um, percent But there's going to be millions and millions of dollars put into their projects this year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, from partners. So there's going to be a lot of progress there. Their next door neighbors already uh, had a real nice copper hit uh, American Eagle gold. I think that are called yep. Um, yep. that was nice. Um, I, I did own that and, and made a nice little profit on it, but, um, but I like Amar cause they got multiple projects, great jurisdiction, uh, great people behind it, uh, good promoters um, and lots of money going to be spent on it this year. So, um, I do like them uh, for uh, this year, and the stock is that stock is still down, so that that's mm -hmm. a good buy right now. Well, I think they've got on two of their projects, they got uh, up to two hundred million dollars uh, um, from their partners for earning. You just don't see that in in BC with juniors, so you um, don't. You see a partner spend maybe ten million, you know, and that's ooh, that's nice, yeah. you know. This is going to be the hundreds of millions. Yeah, yeah. So they've done a very good. And full disclosure, um, I'm a shareholder of Amark and Suma Silver. Um, I've been working with Amark for a year and a half now, and Suma. I've been oh yeah, with, okay, great. Yeah, Suma, I've been working with for four years. So that's full disclosure to all the listeners out there. Those two are paying clients. I am shareholders of both of them. Uh, so I, I speak glowing things about them, of course. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And and full disclosure for me, every stock I've mentioned, I owned. Okay. I own as well um but i here's it's sort of backwards for me i don't put them on the website unless they're a stock i would go overweight or already am yeah, overweight yeah, of so course that's the criteria you know i'm not going to yeah, put yeah. a company up there that i wouldn't own yeah. you know or just an average position you know i'm putting companies up there that i am or will be overweight yeah i i certainly would not bring on a client under the kin banner without owning the yeah. stock or cutting exactly. a check Right, because right. I want to feel comfortable too, right? And it's uh, yeah, it's and, and and get excited about it. So, um, Jeff, so so what's next? Do you see any conferences coming up that you're attending that people can find you at? Or yeah, it, crazy schedule coming up. Um, <laughs> so I fly to um, Kai Hoffman's Gold. Oh, right on. Uh, um, I love Kai. He's awesome. He is. Uh, he has a gold conference in Frankfurt every year, a couple times a year. And I'll be at the May one. So I leave May 1st for oh, that. Great. Um, and then from there, I fly to Vancouver yep. for another conference, the Metals Investor the, Forum yep. Conference. Awesome. Uh, come home for, and I'll be in Vancouver, by the way, for a week. I'm staying for a week. So uh, if anybody wants to try to meet, I'd be happy to do that if I can. Well, you and, know, then, and I will uh, go for a coffee. Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah. I'd love it. Uh, right so that, that's the near term schedule. And then in June, I'll be going on some uh, mine site visits. I'll be at the Yukon mining tour, the group tour. So I'll be seeing four or five companies there at least, maybe more. Um, I'm also going to go to Columbia in June um, uh, to visit a project down there that I'm I'm thinking about. And then uh, in July, I'll be at Rick World's conference in Boca Raton. So awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to be a busy schedule. Busy. I hope you don't have yeah. any young children still. <laughs> yeah, no, they're grown. They're out of the house. So that, yeah, that's yeah. My my two are out of the house now. It's crazy. It's like I'm, a, I'm an empty wow. nester. I'm an empty nester in a, in a few months once my son gets through grade 12. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Hey, congratulations, man. Yeah. Good for you. Well, it's, it's perfect time for midlife crisis, right? <laughs> uh, Jeff, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was a really fun chat. 
if uh now that my audience sees what you look like you know you may get some strangers that come up to you say hi um <laughs> so be, be 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 kind to them or be mean i don't care um uh, oh no kind of course yeah, yeah, I, yeah I love yeah. talking to fellow investors yeah yeah awesome and yeah so yeah really appreciate your time i'd love to have you back on the show to kind of check up on some of these names you brought up um in six months or something like that it'd be just always absolutely fun always fun to chat mining stocks and exploration and uh, what's going on in this market so a absolutely we should uh, try for september because historically September is gold's biggest month. That's its strongest month. So yep. maybe it'll be different this year, right? Maybe yeah, who knows? it'll be strong <laughs> through the summer, like you said. But but uh, yeah, let's let's talk. I'll have some new names by then too. Cool. Right on. Well, uh, yeah, Jeff. Thanks so much. That was that was a great uh, a great fireside chat, and um, we'll 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 stay in touch. So we'll uh, we'll leave your information at the bottom of our, our YouTube page. And uh, once again, thank you for joining our show. And uh, like or comment or share this episode if uh, you got something valuable out of it. Great. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, Arlen. This was, this was a lot of fun and we'll do it again.